Today during science, we're going to continue reading our Water and Climate FOSS Science textbook. I'm going to use the page finder and turn to page 30. On page 30, we're going to learn about how people study the weather. People who study the weather, like these two individuals, are called meteorologists. Sometimes when you watch TV during the news, you see meteorologists telling you what the weather is going to be like for the day or for the week. Let's find out what their job is. Studying weather. Meteorologists are scientists who study the weather. Weather is the condition of the air in an area, and it is always changing. That is why meteorologists must constantly observe and measure those conditions. They use weather instruments to gather information so they can predict the weather. Meteorologists measure the temperature of the air. They observe cloud patterns. They measure how much rain or snow falls. They measure the speed and direction of the wind. Hmm. Meteorologists have to do so much in order to know what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. One thing you might notice is that they always seem to know about the temperature. That's how hot it is. Temperature. Temperature is a measure of how hot the air is. Temperature is measured with a thermometer. There are many kinds of thermometers. The most common kind is a liquid thermometer. A liquid thermometer is a thin glass tube connected to a small bulb of liquid. As the liquid warms and cools, it expands and contracts. The height of the column of liquid in the tube changes in response to the temperature. By labeling the liquid tube to show temperatures, the meteorologist can read the temperature directly from the thermometer. Have you seen a thermometer like this before? The amount of red liquid tells you how hot or cold it is in the air. That's how we know the temperature. Metals also expand and contract in response to temperature change. Some thermometers use strips made of two different metals to detect temperature changes. These are called bimetallic thermometers. The two metals have different rates of expansion. One side of the strip expands more than the other as it heats up, and the strip bends. A pointer on the end of the bending strip points to the temperature. So most thermometers that we see are like these two. They're liquid thermometers. Meteorologists also learn about precipitation. That's the amount of liquid that's falling in the sky. We definitely see precipitation like rain in Oakland. Let's find out more about precipitation. Precipitation. Some clouds bring rain or snow. Water in any form that falls to earth from clouds is called precipitation. Precipitation is measured using a rain gauge. The kind of precipitation that falls depends on how cold the air is. Precipitation falls as rain when the air between the clouds and Earth's surface is warmer than zero degrees Celsius. Degrees C. Most precipitation falls as rain. So they use a rain gauge like this to find out how much rain has fallen. Most of the precipitation that falls is rain because it's pretty warm outside. Sleet forms when rain passes through air that is cooler than zero degrees Celsius. Because the temperature is below zero degrees Celsius, the raindrops freeze, forming bits of ice. Hail forms in thunderstorm clouds, especially when there are strong winds blowing large droplets of water upward. To form hail, a large part of the cloud has to be below zero degrees Celsius. Snow falls from clouds made of tiny ice crystals. If the air between the clouds and Earth is cooler than zero degrees Celsius, the ice crystals do not melt as they fall. So most of the precipitation we see is rain. As it gets colder, you might see um, forms of sleet, hail, and snow. 
Meteorologists also need to know about the wind. Wind speed. Moving air is called wind. Meteorologists are interested in how fast the wind is moving. To measure wind speed, meteorologists use anemometers and wind meters. An anemometer uses a rotating shaft with wind catching cups attached at the top. The harder the wind blows, the faster the shaft rotates and the faster the cups move through the air. The moving cups measure the wind speed. So meteorologists use an anemometer like this to measure how fast the wind or how hard the wind is blowing. A wind meter is an instrument with a small ball in a tube. When wind blows across the top of the tube, the flow of air up the tube lifts the ball. The harder the wind blows, the higher the ball rises. Both instruments are adjusted to report wind in miles per hour. MPH or kilometers km per hour. A meteorologist can also use a wind meter to measure the wind. Wind also always blows in one direction or another. So in this picture you can see that the wind is blowing this way because the palm trees are made to go this way. How do they measure that? This thing is moving because the wind is blowing it in different directions. Wind direction. Meteorologists are also interested in the direction the wind is blowing. To find out wind direction, meteorologists use a wind vane. A wind vane is a shaft with an arrow point on one end and a broad paddle shape at the other end. When wind hits the paddle, it rotates the shaft so that the arrow points into the wind. Using a compass, the meteorologist finds out the direction the shaft is pointing. Wind direction is the direction from which the wind is blowing. It is reported in compass directions, such as north or south. So this wind vane tells people the, t uh, the direction of the wind, and you can also use a compass. Now, because technology has improved so much, there are um, more modern instruments that we use to measure the weather. For example, these are digital weather instruments that can be used at home. And this meteorologist is studying a radar image of a storm. You might have seen something like this on TV before. Modern Weather Instruments Meteorologists now use a combination of traditional weather instruments and computer-based digital weather instruments. Meteorologists get information from advanced electronic instruments that are placed in good locations for monitoring weather. Those instruments use radio transmitters, like those in cell phones, to send information to weather centers where meteorologists work. This weather device for home use has electronic instruments inside for detecting and reporting temperature and humidity. Have you seen something like this at your house before? Some models measure air pressure and are connected to anemometers to measure wind speed. So we don't usually have these at our house, but now you can look all of this information up on your phone or computer. Have you seen these weather balloons before? Meteorologists also use weather balloons to carry instruments high up into the sky so they can measure more about the weather. Weather balloons carry weather instruments high into the sky. The weather instruments gather information about air temperature, wind speed, and wind direction. They gather information about air pressure, Air pressure is the force of air pushing on things around it. 
Weather balloons also gather information about humidity. Humidity is the amount of water in the air. All this information helps meteorologists predict what weather is coming. They can make forecasts that help people know what to expect. We need to know the weather to make choices about what to wear, how to travel, and what to do. So why do you think it's important for us to know what the weather is going to be like? Tell me in your seesaw assignment today.